for a while so I am a little bit rocky but anyway I know and I believe that it will not hinder us to discuss our interesting topic for this day which is Warren Bennis and his lessons on leadership so first let us know who is Warren Bennis and his humble beginning Warren Gamaliel Bennis born on March 8th 1925 and died last July 31, 2014. He was known as the father of leadership. He is an American scholar, an organizational consultant and author, and a professor in different universities. Widely regarded as pioneer of the contemporary field of leadership studies, he is the founding chairman of the Leadership Institute at the University of Southern California. He is also the author of 30 books on leadership. He is the president of the University of Cincinnati from 1971 to 1977. Ben is mentored CEOs, trained countless soon to be leaders while teaching at Harvard, MIT, and USC, and advised US presidents like John F. Kennedy, Lyndon Johnson, Gerald Ford, and Ronald Reagan. A Life in Leadership, The Legacy of Warren Bennis. The Wall Street Journal named him as one of the top 10 most sought speakers on management in 1992. Forbes magazine referred to him as the Dean of Leadership Gurus in 1996. The Financial Times referred to him in 2000 as the professor who established leadership as a respectable academic field. In August 2007, Business Week ranked him as one of the top 10 top leaders in business. Warren Bennis Humble Beginning Warren's background is instructive. He enlisted in the U.S. Army in 1943 at the age of 18 and served as one of the Army's youngest infantry officers in Europe during World War II. For his service, he was awarded the Purple Heart and Bronze Star. Decades later, he related his experiences and feelings about that incredible time with his U.S. student. He was modest about it all and spoke of being hunted by fear. Spoke of officers who took care of their troops and took time to get to know them and take them under their wing. He talked about being asked as a young officer to lead a platoon, including men much more experienced than he and about opening up and asking for their help and earning their respect and trust. Years later, again sharing leadership lessons with his U.S. students, he talked about his many failures and shortcomings as a university leader and how hard it was in ways much different than the other. His openness and vulnerability helped to bring uncommon depth to his classroom. He dismissed superficial and romanticized notions of a great leader. He sought to labor his own psyche as a human being, wrestling with fears, insecurities, and imperfections even as he had high aspirations and deep commitments, and to get to that depth of insight in the other leaders he studied, met, and advised. Personally, Warren was many things, curious and charming, gracious and warm, Thoughtful and generous. He had high standards and expected your best. He had a heart for connecting and giving back. He had a gleam in his eye that would light you up too. Bendis learned his first leadership lessons on the battlefield during World War II as one of the youngest armed militants to serve in Europe. Over time, he developed inspired leadership theories that disregard command and control as a creativity killer and taught that passion, integrity, curiosity, and seeing beyond quarterly numbers as a drivers of success.
Warren Benedict. He is also known as the father of leadership. So before we discuss the lessons of leadership by Warren Bennis, let me ask you first, what comes first in your mind when someone asks you, who are you? Sino ka nga ba talaga? Do you know yourself? By the way, who I am? I am Juvie Maisie Laule. I am a child of God. How about you? Who are you? So why did I ask this? And in a way, you will... Uh, know the answer along the way as I discussed the lessons of leadership by Warren Bennis. Leadership lessons from Warren Bennis. First is leaders are made, not born. The journey to becoming a leader in this road comes as a result of going through a process of self-discovery. Before people can learn to lead, they must learn something about this strange leader. For Warren Bennis, leaders was molded through the struggles and challenges that the leaders have experienced in life. Second, leadership is like a beauty. To an extent, leadership is like a beauty. It's hard to define, but you know it when you see it. To like a beauty, it's hard to find, but we know when we see it. To like a leader, like a leadership, we know when we see one in front of us. Third, leading means deeply affecting others. A leader is not simply someone who experiences the personal exhilaration of being in charge. A leader is someone whose actions have the most profound consequences on others' people's lives. For better or for worse, sometimes forever and ever. As a leader, every decision that we make or do, there will be lives that will be affected or shall we say, a domino effect to the people we are in charge of. Fourth, a leader is self-aware. The leader never lies to himself, especially about himself, knows his flaws as well as his assets, and deals with them thoroughly. A true leader is not denial about himself and have this self-pride. A leader accepts his or her shortcomings and learns to turn his or her weaknesses into strength. Fifth, curiosity and risk-taking makes a leader. The leader wonders about everything, wants to learn as much as he can. He is willing to take risks, experiment, try new things. He doesn't worry about failure but embraces errors, knowing he will learn from them. A leader takes the lead to take risks and is teachable for the improvement of his team. Six, a leader sees the big picture. The manager has his eye on the bottom line, the leader has his eye on the horizon. As a leader, we must see all areas needed to be seen. What is ahead of us, what is in us, and who relies on us. This means the leader must see it all. 7. And relax. The leader does right. The manager does things right, but the leader does the right thing. So that's all for Warren Bennis and his lessons on leadership. Hello, Giancarlo. Hello, Marianne. What brings you here, Giancarlo? I have a question, Marianne. Could you please tell me, what is the difference between a leader and a manager? According to Warren Bennis, a leader innovates. She is an original. She focuses on people. She inspires trust. She has a long-term view. Could you give some names of leaders who have some of the qualities you mentioned? Sure. Simone de Beauvoir, Martin Luther King Jr., Jimmy Carter, Rosa Luxemburg, Mao Zedong, Rosa Parks, Howard Zinn, and Madras de Plaza de Mayo. I'm confused. You mean there are leaders of the left and then there are leaders of the right of the political spectrum? Yeah, uh, there are leaders of all shades and colors, from right to left. Now I understand, Marianne. It's all clear. Thanks so much. See you later, Marianne. Goodbye now, Giancarlo. Bye, Marianne. Hey everybody, Bill Stanton here with Producing Results, coming to you today in black and white, because it makes me look artsy. Hey, today I want to talk to you about Warren Bennis. Warren Bennis, who died on July 31st, just a few weeks ago. Uh, Warren Bennis was called the father 
of leadership. Now you may be thinking, come on Bill, surely leadership existed before Warren Bennis. Yeah, it did, but Warren Bennis was the first guy who really started studying the art and science of leadership. And here's the big thing that Warren Bennis said. You know, people used to think that leaders were born, not made. He completely disputed that. He said leaders are absolutely made. Here's what he thought leadership was. He said that leadership is the process of continual self-discovery. In other words, leadership is a process of lifelong learning. Now that's a theme that we've touched on here and there uh, over the course of the past few months and few years as, we, as we've been talking about leadership here. It is a process of lifelong learning. The more you know, not just depth, but breadth as well. The more you know, the more different things you learn about, the, the more curious you are about the world around you, the better leader you're gonna be. You're also gonna be more creative. We've talked about that as well also. But leadership as a concept of lifelong learning and self-discovery. We owe that concept to Warren Bennis. I completely agree with it. So here's what I'd like you to do. In honor of the late, great Warren Bennis, I want you to make a commitment to learn something new. I don't care what it is. It might be just a little thing. It might be a big thing. It might be a new language. It might just be uh, you read a book that you wouldn't have read or something like that. But make a commitment this week to learn something new. So what is it for you? What is it that you will learn that'll take you just a little bit out of your comfort zone? Just expand your horizons just a bit. It'll make you a more interesting person and it will make you a better leader. So learn something new this week and now go out there and produce great results today. Let's take a look at the differences in leadership and management. Leadership is the process of influencing others to achieve group or organizational goals. According to the late business professor Warren Bennis, the primary difference between leaders and managers is that leaders are concerned with doing the right thing, while managers are concerned with doing things right. In other words, leaders begin with the question, what should we be doing, while managers start with the question, how can we do what we're already doing better? Leaders focus on vision, mission and goals and objectives, while managers focus on productivity and efficiency. Managers see themselves as preservers of the status quo, while leaders see themselves as promoters of change and challengers of the status quo in that they encourage creativity and risk-taking. Another difference is that managers have a relatively short-term perspective, while leaders take a long-term view. Managers are concerned with control and limiting the choices of others, while leaders are more concerned with expanding people's choices and options. Managers also solve problems so that others can do their work, while leaders inspire and motivate others to find their own solutions. Finally, managers are also more concerned with means, how to get things done, while leaders are more concerned with ends, what gets done. Although leaders are different from managers, organizations need them both. Managers are critical to getting day-to-day -day work done, and leaders are critical to inspiring employees and in setting the organization's long-term direction. The key issue for any organization is the extent to which it's properly led and properly managed. So now we have learned what is the lessons on leadership by Warren Bennis. What is a leader? What is a manager? But now the question is, are you a leader or a follower? So to know this, let's have a short activity that I got from the YouTube. So, but first, let's get your pencil or ball pen and a piece of paper to write your appearance. So, enjoy!
result, are you a leader or a follower? For those who are a leader, congrats. May you have learned from Warren Bennis what is to be a leader, what are the character of a leader, and what are the jobs of a leader. And for those who are followers, do you want to become a leader or stay being a follower? Because Warren Bennis has a lesson for you. How to become a leader in his book on becoming a leader. This book is about how. How people become a leader, how they lead, and how organization encourage or stifle a potential leader. So this book was divided into 10 parts, which we will discuss one by one. So let's start. Warren Bennis on his book, Becoming a Leader. On Becoming a Leader is a book about how. How people become leaders, how they lead, and how organizations can encourage or stifle potential leaders. This is not a book about how to gain a possession or prominence, while those may be part of the droppings of leadership. They are not the same. Many people have those who are not truly leaders in any significant way. First is mastering the context. The first step in becoming a leader is to recognize the context for what it is. Breaker, not a maker. A trap, not a launching pad. And declare your independence. The world around you would try to shape you, define you, squeeze you into a mold. Real leaders must master their context. The times we live in and the situation we face, rather than being defined by it, controlled by it, or limited by it. They must master it and become their own person, not letting others define them but defining themselves. First and foremost, find out what it is you're about and be that. Be what you are and don't lose it. It's very hard to be who we are because it doesn't seem to be what anyone wants, said by Warren's father, Mr. Dennis. First steps in the process behind Norman Lear's success in mastering the context. First is becoming main self-expressing. Second, listening to the inner voice. Third, learning from the right mentors. And lastly, giving oneself over to a guiding vision. Second, understanding the basics. All leaders, although different in many ways, share some basic ingredients. There are five key qualities that every leader must have. The first basic ingredient of leadership is a guiding vision. The leader has a clear idea of what he wants to do and the strength to persist in the face of obstacles. They know what they want to do and have the strength to withstand oppositions and failure. Second is passion, enabling them to stick it out for the long haul. The third, a leader loves what they do, enabling them to give hope and inspiration to others. The next ingredient is integrity, which has three parts, self-knowledge, candor, and maturity. You cannot succeed if you don't know yourself, your strength and weaknesses, what you want and why you want it, etc. Candor is the key to knowledge and honesty of path and action, combined with steadfast devotion to principle. Maturity comes with experience and following others, and brings the ability to lead other people into what they have learned. Finally, leaders must be people of curiosity and daring. Leaders wonder about everything and aren't afraid to take big risks and try new things, knowing that even if they fail, they will learn from it. Although there's are although basic, these are not inborn traits. True leaders invent themselves, they are made not born, and usually self-made by developing character and vision. Although basic, these are not inborn traits. True leaders invent themselves, they are made not born, and usually self-made by developing character and vision. There are actually two kinds of self-made leaders, once made and twice made. Once made leaders carry the qualities we have discussed, but are those that had very little adversity in their lifetime. They have experienced an easy transition from home and family to independence. Twice-born leaders are those who experience suffering, they felt isolated at times in their lives, and develop an elaborate inner life, which leave them with strong inner direction, self-assurance, and charisma. 
Likewise, born leaders are often the stronger of the two. Leadership is about being authentic and self inventing in the process. It is organic and intentional. It is the full de development of your gifts and talents, full deployment of them, and the ability to adapt along with you. As Norma Lear states, the goal isn't worth arriving at unless you enjoy the journey. Leaders are those who work hard to be their best, continue to self-develop, and who enjoy the process. They are the men and women who are continually pushing forward and free of the fear of failure. They continue to risk along the way. Third, knowing yourself. People start to become leaders at the moment to decide for themselves how to be. That isn't easy but is necessary. Knowing yourself means making a distinction between who others think you are and who you want to be. It is a lifetime process, not an event, and no one can teach you how to do it. So, four lessons of self-knowledge. No one can teach you how to become you, but there are some useful patterns that seem consistent over different people's experience. The first is that you are your own best teacher. Leaders so a gap. They knew they had to learn and grow, or admit that they had settled for less than they were capable of. That leads naturally to the second pattern, taking responsibility for that learning and for yourself, rather than waiting for someone to provide it for you. Pattern 3, you can learn anything you want to learn, which means embracing new experiences and diving into the unknown. To embrace it, absorb it, and then understand it. The final lesson is that true understanding comes from reflecting on your experience. Nothing is truly yours until you understand it, not even yourself. Reflection leads to understanding. We are shaped more than we realize by our families, schools, and society in general. We are all products of our past environments and relationships. We must therefore acknowledge the result of our upbringing and past experiences. Reflect on them and learn from them. Though all people are shaped by their elders and peers, leaders are self-directed. They learn from others but are not made by them. True learning must begin by unlearning. Leaders must be able to examine the past and reflect on what is relevant in their memories and feelings of past behavior so as not to be controlled by them. Again, leaders learn from others but they are not made by others. Fourth, knowing the world. Fourth, knowing the world. Besides knowing themselves, leaders need to promote the world they live in. Leaders are those who learn from every life experience. They are continually developing themselves by reading and reflecting on life experience. Certain experiences are especially valuable for learning about the world. Road and continuing education, extensive travel, a rich private life, and having mentors. In addition, adversity, mistakes are tremendous sources of learning when they are reflected on. There are lessons in everything and the learning can be drawn from them when you think about them. Analyze them, examine, question, reflect on them, and finally, understand them. Leaders embrace the world they live in and learn from their experiences. Learning from experience means consciously seeking the kinds of experiences that will enlarge you, Taking risks as a matter of course, knowing that failure is both vital and inevitable. Seeing the future as an opportunity to do things you haven't done rather than as a trial or test. And keep operating on instinct. Another common factor in leaders is their innate ability to follow their inner voice. Leaders trust their instincts, and above pleasing the crowd or shareholders, the leaders follow their instinct despite popular opinion and takes responsibility for their actions. This is not to say that they disregard wise counsel and do not consider the impact of their decisions on others. However, leaders learn to follow their inner voice and they are able to carry others with them and take risks. Leaders often take a left and right brain approach at problem solving using both their strategic thinking and their creative thinking abilities. They are able to problem solve in the moment while keeping the ultimate goal and vision before them in the same breath. The point of leadership is not to learn someone else's techniques, but to be yourself, fully developed and fully deployed. To be yourself and use yourself completely. 6. Deploying yourself. Strike hard, try everything. 6. Deploying yourself. Strike hard, try everything. 
leadership is first being then doing so letting yourself emerge is the essential task for leaders it is how one takes the step from being to doing and taking that step in a way that is more about expressing who you are than proving something to someone there is a natural progression of expression that ultimately results in someone becoming a leader you start to identify your point of view and start out where and how to give expression to it. Desire or passion begins to emerge. You know what you want to do. Desire is naturally to master it. Leaders are people who have mastered their vocation or profession by giving themselves fully to it. They put in a time to study, learn, and practice until they achieve a high degree of competence. 7. Moving through chaos. Learning to lead is on one level. Learning to manage change, whether it is setting direction, establishing a philosophy, or creating a culture. Change is part of the process, and effective leaders learn how to manage change and adapt to it. Simple to say, but challenging to do. Leaders grow by leading, especially when facing obstacles. There is no substitute for experience. As weather shapes mountains, so problems make leaders. Difficult bosses, lack of vision, and virtue in the executive suit, its circumstances beyond their control, and their own mistakes have been the leader's basic curriculum. 8. Getting people on your side. A basic truism of leadership is that if no one is following, you aren't leading. Effective leaders are able to get people on their side, and because of that, are able to make changes in their organizations and turn their visions into reality. It is possible to be a leader without a position. In those cases, you lead by your voice, exercising influence based on who you are and what you say. The underlying issue here is trust. Trust is what gets people on your side and keeps them on your side. So there are four ingredients to generating and sustaining trust. First is constancy. Leaders face surprises, but they don't create surprises. They are steady and don't constantly change course. Second, congruity. Leaders walk their talk, believe what they believe. Third, reliability. They are there when it comes. And fourth, integrity. Leaders honor their commitments and promises. When those four factors are present, people will trust you and follow you. They will be on your side. If any are lacking, trust will be lost. And eventually, your followers will be as well. Nine, Organizations can help or hinder. As we have seen, the basis for leadership is learning, and especially learning from experience. The organization must offer its employees the kinds of experiences that will enable them to learn and ultimately to lead. Leaders are not made by taking courses. You learn by experience. That means it is the organization's commitment to providing potential leaders with opportunities to learn by experience that permits growth and change. Those opportunities will drive, trigger a can-do spirit to inspire self-confidence. Options include special projects, job rotation, new ventures, etc. Things that give them new experiences or that require the development of new skills. The higher the stakes, the more opportunities for learning and for failures and mistakes. But as we have seen, there is no growth without peace and no progress without mistakes. An organization must develop a healthy attitude towards mistakes, an attitude where risk-taking is encouraged, mistakes are considered normal, and correction, not censure, follows when mistakes are made. And lastly, forging the future. In a time of drastic change, it is the learners who inherit the future. The learned find themselves equipped to live in a world that no longer exists by Eric Hofer. As you look to the future, a future filled with change and ambiguity, what are the factors individuals and organizations need to exhibit in order to cope with change and create a new future? So there are 10 factors for the future. First is leaders manage the dream. Every leader has the ability to create a compelling vision and then translate that dream into reality. Leaders embrace error. They create an atmosphere where risk-taking is encouraged. They aren't afraid to make mistakes, and they admit them when they do. Third, leaders encourage reflective back talk. 
they know the importance of having people around them who will tell them the unvarnished truth. Fourth, leaders encourage dissent. They welcome contrary views and give us advocates. Fifth, leaders possess optimism, faith, and hope. These qualities are contagious and lift organization to new heights. Six, leaders understand the Pygmalion effect. People will live up or down to what is expected of them. Leaders expect the best but are not unrealistic about what that is. Seven, leaders have the great skill factor. Ritsky said it's not as important to know where the pack is as to know where it will be. Leaders have a sense of where the organization needs to go if it is to go. Eight, leaders see the long view. They have patience. They aren't controlled by short-term thinking. And nine, leaders understand stakeholder symmetry. They know they need to balance the interests of all the different groups with a stake in the organization. And lastly, leaders create strategic alliances. They don't feel the need to do everything, rather they create partnership with others who can get things done. So in summary and becoming a leader, you must master the context, you must understand the basics, you must know yourself, you must know the world, you must operate on instinct, you must deploy yourself, strike hard, try everything, you must move through chaos, you must get people on your side, and your organizations can help or hinder and lastly forging the future so if that sounds like an impossible dream to you consider this it's much easier to express yourself than to deny yourself and much more rewarding too